hunt for the Loch Ness Monster. Here we are in Fort Augustus at the foot of Loch Ness. Our hunt for the monster begins. Loch Ness is huge. It's about 23 miles long, one mile wide, and at its deepest point it reaches about 750 metres. Plenty of room for a monster. There's been thousands of sightings of the monster over the years, so I decided to get down to the edge of the loch and have a look and see if I could spot it myself. Twelve hours later, I decided I finally had to admit defeat. Next stop, the visitor centre. A more scientific approach was needed. I found a lot of scientific evidence here, but most of it seemed to be against the existence of a monster. It was here that I discovered that Nessie was supposed to be a plesiosaur, a kind of reptilian, kind of aquatic marine dinosaur type thing. I heard tales of faked photographs and dubious characters. I also heard how scientists had tried to scan the loch using sonar. Sonar? What's that I hear you say? Sit back and prepare to be educated. Sonar is basically the underwater equivalent of radar, transmitting sound waves into the water instead of radio waves. These sound waves reflect off anything with a different density to the surrounding water. By working out the time it takes for the sound waves to reflect back, we can work out the distance of these objects from the boat. This allows us to build up a picture of what's underneath the surface. The sound waves will reflect off both solid objects or volumes of air. This allows us to detect fish or other aquatic animals by bouncing off their swim bladders or their lungs. Using this scientific method, guess what they found in Loch Ness? Well, not a lot really. There were a couple of strange signals, but it was mainly fish, a bit of wood, the odd dead sheep, and water. Hmm. But then there are more problems. Many cynics argue that even if such a creature could survive in the loch, there's just not enough food in there to sustain such a large beast. Most aquatic life in the loch, fish, seals and otters, live close to the surface where the temperature of the water can reach up to 12 degrees in the summer. But below those depths, the water is icy cold and the pressure is crushing. Could anything survive down there? And another thing. There can't only be one Loch Ness Monster. There must be a lot of them in order for the species to survive. That makes it even worse. There simply isn't enough food in the loch to sustain such a large population. Or any population at all. The possible existence of a Loch Ness Monster, or more than one, is looking less and less likely. And so it was time to leave the shores of Loch Ness and any hope of seeing the mysterious creature. But still, my beliefs remained. Come on, you stop filming now. What the hell? So nah. All embarrassing. Not enough food in the loch. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. Impossible for a reptile to survive. <laughs> What do they know? It's out there somewhere. They didn't mention the undersea tunnels, did you? They didn't know. They didn't mention that once. Mm. The undersea tunnels. Could be a sea monster visiting. And so I left this beautiful area behind and a multi million pound tourist industry. But I also left something else a childhood belief and a sense of innocence that there was something out there. But despite all that, despite all the scientific evidence against, I couldn't resist one last look. There must be something out there.